In the previous tutorial, I demonstrated how to use ImageG and their WormTrack plugin to automatically quantify thrashing rates of sea ligands. In this video tutorial, I'm going to take the next step and uh, completely automate all the steps I showed you previously and analyze a, a number of movies uh, simultaneously using the WormTrack batch. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the three movies here in the, I have in the same folder containing different worm strains. I'm going to fire up the worm track batch and I will select the directory in which I have these three movies. The worm track batch will pop up with a an input window where I can type in all the information needed to analyze the movies. The first field is the file type and the file type used in the three movies I have in this folder are QuickTime. So I'll select file type number three for MOME movies. The next field is the image type. Uh, in this case I have again dark objects swimming on a light background. But you can imagine having fluorescent animals on a dark background and we would then type in one in this field. The next field is the background subtraction and in the manual mode I demonstrated how to use the maximum C projection for background subtraction. Uh, in this batch uh, script I, there, there are several options and in this case I'm going to choose option 2, rolling ball uh, frame, first frame because uh, some of the animals are not moving a lot, so they would be counted as background if I use the maximum C. The next option is the thresholding mode. It can use the automatic thresholding using the Otsu max entropy of 1 algorithm, or you can put in a fixed value in the next uh, input window. Uh, uh, but in this case, I'm just going to choose the Otsu automatic thresholding, and then the fixed thresh will be ignored. Skeletonize, uh, I'm not going to go into details with, uh, but I instead skip to the next field, which is the movie duration. And all the movies I have in this folder I have a duration of 30 seconds. So I'm typing in 30 seconds, and the batch script will then use this information to calculate the frame rate. And uh, since I'm typing in a duration, it, the next field is ignored. The next field is scaling uh, to convert the pixels into real life distances. And uh, I know based on the calibrations I've done on the microscope that uh, each uh, uh, that 60 pixels in this case corresponds to one millimeter. So I'm going to type in 60. The next uh, the remaining fields are identical to the ones found in the normal worm track and um, so I'm going to just going to type in more or less the same values except that I have uh, zoomed in a little bit more on the animals so they have a, a larger area. Um, I'm going to type in exactly the same values as before in the other fields. And since the first run with the background subtraction and um, it's going to take a while, I'm, I'm going to uh, skip uh, the analysis because it's going to take a few minutes uh, and uh, come back right after uh, the summary. The worm track batch is now completed its analysis and what you will see is a summary window um, popping up and showing uh, the different files that it has analyzed and the number of objects and the number of tracks. Um, and what, what we can all immediately see is that there's not a lot of tracks in the N2 and Q35. So some of the input parameters might have been slightly wrong. The other thing I would uh, demonstrate here is uh, the different files that the worm track batch has, has generated. So for each of the movie files, uh, 
it has generated, for instance, for the G85R, it has generated a text file that contains the results, same results as uh, showed in the result window. It has also generated two zip files uh, that contain the uh, binary movies. And uh, if I open up uh, the N2 labels file, we can begin to figure out why there was only uh, nine tracks. And what you can see here is that some of the animals were not tracked, most likely because they uh, are larger in area than what I had put in on the, under the input value. But since we now, the, the worm track batch has saved also all the binary zip files, it can reuse these and we don't need to go through the long uh, background subtraction steps to when, when we want to track all the animals again. So I'm gonna uh, run the worm track batch again and select uh, crashing, same folder again. And uh, basically it has now remembered all my, my settings and these are saved in the worm track settings text file here, shown here. Uh, and uh, the last field here now becomes important because one can use the existing binary zip files to avoid having to go through all the background subtraction steps again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to type in 400 here to allow the worm track batch to also analyze the slightly larger than anticipated animals. I'm just going to click OK and it's now going to take a little less time to analyze the movies because the binary files are loaded quite rapidly. What you will see now are the different steps in the analysis carried out automatically by the script. And while the script is running, we can follow and see that instead of um, measuring 33 tracks in the first run, the second run had uh, 37 tracks. And now we are analyzing the N2s. And this time we are getting more animals but uh, again, animals that are, have a less than 100 frames without overlapping with other animals are like not. So this time we got 23 tracks. And what I can show about the final movie is analyzing is that uh, in addition to the, because we have now a real life and, and Distances, this average perimeter of the animals is actually the the, uh, the 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 outline of the animals or the perimeter, and we can use this value uh, because uh, the length of the animal is approximately half of the perimeter to, to measure uh, quite accurately the length of the animals, and in this case we would then uh, say that. The animals are approximately 1.2 millimeter long, and the N2 are therefore statistically significantly longer than the G85 are, for instance. The other thing you would get uh, as before is the number of bends, and you can see that the N2 animals have a significantly faster thrashing rate than we see for the uh, G85 are, uh, and the Q35 animals have a uh, about approximately half the uh, the, the fraction rate of the N2s. We can again go in and uh, load uh, the labeled file. And you can see that or validate that all the tracks are uh, from single animals and not from overlapping animals, if you want to. Or you can go in and, and 
manually count that the analysis has, has proceeded correctly. And this concludes the, the second um, video tutorial.